negotiations uh, for Slovenia, Slovenian light pollution law. So, Mr. Mohar, uh, the floor is yours. And Anička, please uh, share the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, for this uh, excellent workshop and thank you to Zdenka and Michal for uh, fantastic presentations about uh, uh, phy uh, physiological uh, impacts. So um, I would like to connect my talk more uh, to not only to impacts but also to experiences because uh, I think in this uh, this field, I can give the best, um, the most beneficial information uh, information to you. And it's extremely short time. In 15 minutes, it's very hard to say uh, a lot. I would need two hours, but I will do as quick as possible. So please, next slide. Okay, uh, what's the problem? We are losing night sky because of scattering of the light everywhere. This is a picture from Grand Canyon, beautiful Milky Way. Uh, lights for Phoenix are disturbing almost 300 kilometers away. So light pollution is really international problem. It's not a local problem. It's local problem when we talk about direct impacts of in intrusion of light into bedrooms. But in general, it's very international cross-border problem. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the problem is that uh, in Visegrad group, it's absolutely impossible to see a pristine natural sky without light pollution. And the same is also uh, in Europe. So just a few places uh, on our planet are available that you can say, okay, now I observe uh, really uh, unpolluted sky. This is uh, this image is from Porres and Mountain, uh, very high, but you see a lot of pollution coming from Ljubljana and also from Italy. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, people just think that more light is better light. This new hotel Aurora after reconstruction. 15 years ago was completely dark. I was there many times and now it's so, let's say, uh, illuminated that it's hard to live there. And uh, I uh, for sure uh, will avoid this location for, for next years. Uh, next slide. Okay, the problem is not just the present uh, uh, illumination level and use of light, but increase. Our measurement in Slovenia from 1990 to 2005 in, in, in 15 years, there was 8% annual growth uh, measured at uh, Czernivek Observatory. This is terrible and light pollution is growing everywhere from two to 8%. It depends on the country, it depends on development and, and so on. But uh, of course the goal of European Union and the whole world should be to reduce CO2 emissions, but any kind of growth in, in, in the field of, uh, of pollution is absolutely unsustainable. Next slide, please. Okay, light pollution is a relatively simple problem to solve. It's like one plus one. It's so simple that I simply don't understand why we simply avoid it to, to solve it. But in general, climate change is extremely difficult problem, practically impossible to solve. I have no idea how to solve it. I have absolutely, because in last 30 years, we still are faced uh, with, uh, with the growth of CO2 emissions. So, and the, then the question is, why don't we start with solving the easiest problem, which is light pollution? And also environmentalists and governments simply avoid light pollution and they try to solve unsolvable problem, which is climate change. So this is uh, the really the question that we have to start to talk about. At least 90% of uh, uh, reduction of light pollution is possible in such a way that people cannot notice any change of illumination level. Uh, this is possible because our senses are logarithmic. So if you reduce illumination level by a factor of two, almost nobody will notice any change. Next slide. So Slovenia uh, has the strongest light pollution uh, law 
adopted in 2007. It's really very strong, very sharp. But we failed. We were not effective. What's the problem? Uh, in the first years after adoption, we changed all high-pressure sodium lamps uh, with the flat glass lamp. And in this first period, there was uh, uh, we measured reduction of uh, light pollution. But after this period, there was a big change to uh, Blue Ridge 4000K LAB, and our law has uh, uh, didn't have any limits on that. And uh, in last years, we face enormous growth uh, of, of light pollution. Next slide, please. Okay, the problem is how much light do we use per capita? And uh, if we uh, measure uh, luminance levels by uh, VIRS satellite, these are data for 2007, we see that Germany use uh, 42 units. I will shorten, will not complicate about this. Poland, 83, which is a lot. And then we have a group of Slovakia, Slovenia, Hungary, 63, and Czech Republic, 66. So you see that despite the sharpest law on the planet, uh, we are not much better than, uh, uh, or we are this, almost the same like uh, Visegrad uh, group because simply we use European norm and this is the main problem. Next. Okay. Uh, most of European uni uh, Union now is without illumination, uh, uh, without illuminated exits on highways like uh, Germany, uh, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, Czech Republic. But in Slovenia, the main lighting engineer wrote a study, and this study was somehow adopted or, or transferred into legislation, and now illumination of highways in Slovenia are obligatory. And this is some kind of corruption because we could not allow lighting industry to write the rules of, of uh, illumination and what uh, do we need to uh, illuminate and how much do we need to illuminate? Like the pharmaceutical industry is not allowed to write rules how much pills we should take every morning, even though if we are healthy. Next, please. Okay, we have several cases of illumination of highways. Highways are a big problem. In Germany, they just, this is a uh, Tloris, it's a just a uh, bird view of, of gas station. In Germany, they just illuminate. Uh, in Germany, they just illuminate um, uh, the, the main parking place. In Slovenia and Italy, in some other countries, they they also move uh, this. Uh, let's say further 100 meters illumination of the highway. In Croatia, it's even worse. They make an uh, illuminated line in the middle, and everything is extremely strong and high glare. And Poland is the worst. Because in Poland, they illuminate 400 meters be before the gas stations and 400 meters behind, and everything according to European norm. And this illumination of highways are, is, is paid mostly by European money. So everybody of us pays for something that is absolutely unnecessary because there are so many countries in Europe uh, which prove that illumination of highways even exits or uh, let's say some other sections are not necessary. Please next. So I professionally work on measurements and this is a scan in Poland. It's uh, exit at town uh, Zabarze um, measured several years ago and the blue is unilluminated part of the highway, all the rest are uh, illuminated areas and you see also on scale uh, the, the lighting levels. In Czech Republic or Slovakia, this would be, uh, such exit would be practically without any illumination or Germany or Austria. Next slide, please. Okay, the problem is that in Europe, we use much higher illumination levels than in the United States, which is strange because everything in the United States is bigger than in Europe, you know. Average car in the United States is double the size uh, according to the weight. 
uh, compared to uh, to uh, European Union. So this is example of um, Las Vegas, the main road in city center, and the luminance level uh, was measured by me. So you can believe me, uh, it's less. It's 0 0.08 candela per square meter. And uh, on the right side, you have a scale of typical road illumination, uh, uh, road luminances defined by European norm 13201. And you see that one of the main roads uh, very close to city center in Las Vegas is much darker than any road classification uh, in European Union. So this is really something wrong. So I professionally work uh, uh, in the field of uh, measurements and I can say that 99% of roads in European Union are less illuminated or they have uh, lower um, um, uh, uh, uniformity values that it is requested by European norm EN 13201. So uh, this norm is nothing more but to provide job for the lighting industry for next 100 or 200 years. Next. So uh, we have a lot of fashion in outdoor lighting. So the fashion or 20, 30 years ago was to use high pressure sodium uh, orange light. It was like the most efficient and then we started using 4000K LED without any study, without any, uh, 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 let's say, research what will be impacts on night environment, on uh, what will be physiological uh, uh, impacts or uh, impacts on, um, on animals. I hope Sibylla will talk much more about this. And it's, it's like a fashion. So Slovenia, for example, in last six, seven years is almost completely changed into 4,000K LED, you know, despite that we were every week uh, on TV or uh, newspapers and we simply complained regarding this. I, I hear echo. Could you switch microphone? Could you switch microphone off? Okay. Um, and now the same lighting industry which didn't want to listen to us, is very happy to go again into complete replacement for 4,000K to 2,700K. So it's a, let's say, terrible situation and lighting has nothing with safety, but just with money. Next. Okay, our big problem is that every, almost every investment for European media, uh, Union means degradation of night environment because Projects are uh, typically uh, with illumination, and they are uh, they use uh, excessive levels defined by European norm. And when you complain, they say, "Hey, we cannot do it because we requested that, we got the money, and now we have to fulfill our obligation uh, against European Union." This is park and ride. You see empty in Ljubljana. Nobody is there during the night, but lights, uh, let's say, in full power. Next, please. Okay. Lighting has almost nothing with traffic safety. Uh, we measured that, uh, we, we uh, calculated the police data for the last 10 years, and we found out that during nighttime, 62 fatalities, so that people during the uh, night time are because all of alcohol. Uh, and, and what's the response of the society when you have a lot of, of uh, accidents? Of course, we have many accidents during the night. We have to increase illumination. We have to light, put more and more lights. So, and this is really a, a strange behavior. The next problem is 2% of people who die during day or night in Slovenia, and the same is also uh, in Germany, uh, but most probably in other countries, they die because of the crashes into the lighting poles. And because European norm requires very high, very tall uh, columns, this means very strong lighting pole. And on image, you see a lighting pole 
where uh, one Italian tourist died with direct crash. But you see the lighting pole is almost untouched, you know, because it's strong, big, and according to European norm. Next, please. So Italy and Slovenia, we have a, a light pollution law, uh, which requests facade luminance below one candela per square meter. So, this is about, let's say, we, 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 we translate in illumination about five flux. And this is fine because you can see many, many buildings in Europe uh, with not five flux, but 20, 30, even 50. But at the same time, experts for lighting industry, also the Society uh, uh, for Lighting, CIE, um, is just happy with their recommendations not to use more than 25 flux on windows. So now we have a really a controversy. So uh, what lighting people uh, uh, are saying like that is still acceptable is on windows is five times more than is acceptable for facade illumination in Italy or in Slovenia. Next. So European norm absolutely should not be applied in uh, rural areas because it's a really a crazy document. Uh, it will enormously uh, increase uh, amount of light used in night environment and also CO2 emissions. Uh, my friend Ales Schubitz from Slovenia calculated for his municipality that if they follow all the norm, in his municipality in Slovenia, it's very easy to increase the amount of lights by factor of seven. So 700% more. And this is absolutely unsustainable. We, can, we cannot do it this because we, we don't have money, but in long term, this will be our reality. So absolutely European norm must be kicked into trash of history. Next, please. So European norm requires high lighting poles to achieve uniformity, but it's very often that when you have high lighting poles, you have luminaires in trees, uh, which is uh, example in, uh, here in uh, outside the village of uh, Bukovica. And also we have inverse square law of illumination. So if you go up, we need, uh, we illuminate much bigger area and for bigger area, we need much uh, higher, uh, uh, more light and, and, and more energy. So this is why European norm 313-201 is absolutely against any, let's say, um, uh, um, uh, it's, it, it, it's against cl climate change. It's destruction of climate change. Next, please. Uh, the problem of high illumination, uh, which is, uh, let's say, um, requested by European norm, is that your eyes, for example, in village, you adapt on higher illumination level. And when you drive out of the village, you simply fall in darkness. Okay, somehow uh, new um, headlights can solve this problem. But these new headlights, even the best headlights on the cars are completely useless uh, because when you are below the last luminar in the village, you get so much scattered light. This scattered light is on this image uh, uh, um, painted with the blue that you cannot see any reflection from the pedestrian. So it's extremely, extremely dangerous. And we already had some accidents in Slovenia uh, to have high illumination level. It's much better to have, let's say, dim light, which is uh, typically in Germany and also in Austria, it's, uh, it's, it's simply uh, safer. Next. Okay, our big no is for European norm 300-201. Um, here is a scan of Flachau, a very touristic ski resort, touristic resort, 10,000 tourist beds, and average illumination of that village is 1.6 lux. So my colleagues talked uh, before about six lux is dangerous or so. You know, in Austria, 
or in Germany in villages, typical average illumination is about one lux. And I can tell you, people, because I help a, a lot of Slovenians who call to uh, Dark Sky Slovenia and they ask for help, I can tell you, people start con complaining at one hundredth of lux. So 0 0.01 lux is a problem for most people in Slovenia. Uh, they, this so low illumination level disturbed them and some of them are ready to go to the court even though that, let's say, nuisance is relatively low. Okay, please, next. So we have a lot of research on light pollution. Uh, really a lot. But the problem is uh, we have very small amount of recommendations and this is one document I can share with uh, anyone uh, written by environmentalists from uh, Germany, Italy and Slovenia. These are minimum requirements for European Green Public, uh, public Procurement cr Criteria uh, and we simply should uh, change our way how to uh, illuminate night environment. Otherwise, um, we will completely, completely destroy not just night environment, but we will have, there will be terrible uh, uh, impacts on, uh, on animals and on human health as well. So thank you very much.